Thank you. Thank you. All right. I uh, always have to start these things by, uh, by addressing this accent. I'm rocking because it, it tends to creep people out. Yeah. Uh, it's from Austria, and uh, so am I. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Weird coincidence. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do any jokes about being from Austria, you know, because there's really nothing there to joke about. You know. There's no stereotypes about Austria, and uh, no one famous. <laughs> Ever came from Austria? <laughs> they were all German, is what we tell people. <laughs> No, it's actually, there's a, there's a really famous saying about Austria. It goes, um, Austria's biggest achievement was convincing the world that uh, Beethoven was Austrian <laughs> and Hitler was German. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I disagree with that, you know, because I think our biggest achievement was convincing the world that if there was a, a highly sophisticated robot killer machine, sent from the future. <laughs> it would sound like me. Like, well, I don't know. I don't know what that was. In the 80s, we, we just accepted that. Uh, yeah, good. That sounds good. I've lived, I've lived in London for, for 11 years now. I moved here in 2011. And um, I still remember what my parents said when I, when I told them I'm going to move to London. Uh, they said, uh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm like, no. Uh, I'm from this like, tiny little conservative town in Austria. And like, in their heads, London was just 24-7 terrorism. That's what, they, <laughs> that's what they thought. They were like, oh, no, it's way too dangerous. Don't move to London. Terror attacks happen all the time. I'm like, ah, don't worry about it, you know? So I just moved here. And then I took the tube for the first time. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? They're right. <laughs> Anyone could just walk in here and do something awful like that, you know? And I started wondering, why, why does no one else seem worried? Then, then I got a job. <laughs> and I started commuting every day. <laughs> and I understood. <laughs> commute every day in London, eventually just welcome death. You know? <laughs> 11 years now, you know. If I see a suspicious bag now, I'm just like, ooh, hello. <laughs> Maybe this is it. <laughs> Actually move closer to the bag. <laughs> Like, see it, say it, oh, maybe kick it a little bit, maybe that'll do, maybe that'll do something. <laughs> nah, so, <laughs> obviously, like, they were wrong about the terrorism thing. Like, the only, the only occasion where, where something happened, like, where, near where I was, was the... Uh, do you guys remember the London Bridge attacks yeah. when that happened? Yeah, like, I was, I was near there when it happened. And uh, honestly, the thing that stuck with me most was... That was at the height of when people marked themselves safe on Facebook, right? Like, and that really annoyed me. Because, <laughs> like, you know, I don't know, my, my Facebook timeline was kind of fine because all, all my friends live in London, you know, and they're Londoners, like, they don't care. They're just like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know. I'll mark myself stabbed when it happens. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna mark myself safe. You know? And then one guy did, one guy on my timeline did, and he lived in Glasgow. <laughs> Uh, that's really disrespectful. Like, you shouldn't be doing that. And then also, you're not safe. <laughs> you're in Glasgow. <laughs> but yeah, I moved here in, uh, in 2011 uh, with my girlfriend at the time. Like, she said, oh, let's spend a year abroad. That was her idea. We've been together for six years already. And um, in hindsight, I know now that was a desperate attempt at saving our relationship. It didn't, didn't really work out. Like, half a year later, she suggested we go to the Seychelles on holiday. And we did that. And I still don't know, to this day, why she waited till we were there to break up with me. <laughs> just, 
was kind of weird. It ruined my holiday a little bit, not gonna lie. <laughs> not gonna lie. But really beautiful place. Like, honestly, if you wanna go, I, I highly recommend you go to the Seychelles. And if you've never been, there's a place called Paradise Sunrise Hotel on Praslin Island, that's where we went. Beautiful place. And there's a waiter there called Jack. Um, <laughs> That's not where I'm going with this. <laughs> no. He was a good friend. He gave me... He, he'll give you extra eggs in the morning if he sees you crying. That's what, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> and also, like, in the afternoon, he works as a lifeguard, so if he sees you, like, load up your pockets with rocks and, and walk into the sea, he'll actually save you. Really nice guy. <laughs> I don't know, I think, I think I've been dead inside ever since that happened. Yeah. That's not fair, actually. I think I've been dead inside all my life, you know? And I used to wonder why that is. Like, I, I just couldn't figure it out. And, and now I know it, it's my mom's fault. Because yeah. I had a, had a chat with her the other day, and she's this really, really stubborn woman, right? And we had a chat the other day, and she finally admitted it. She said, uh, I was actually still born and she just raised me anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> Little joke there. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not her fault. It's, her, it's my dad's fault as well. You know? I spent a lot of time in Austria during lockdown. Like I got stuck there for like three months. And uh, that really brought back some memories that I had repressed about like my upbringing. And one of them, one of those memories that came back to me was, was the talk that my dad gave me, you know, the sex talk. <laughs> like I said, small conservative town. He, he sat me down when I was like 13 years old and he was like, son, I've noticed you're hanging out with girls more. And then he just put a condom on the table and he slid it across the table and he was like, just don't make the same mistake I did. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm still here mainly because I, I, started, I started doing comedy, you know, that's the main reason why I'm still in London. And uh, I've talked to a lot of comedians since I started, and everyone has like a story about the moment when they decided to go for it and like try comedy. And mine was, it was the third day in a row that I, I was late to the office for my day job. And that, on that particular day, my train was late because there was a person under the train, you know, as they call it, <laughs> which sounds way more fun than it uh, is. <laughs> It's a person on the train, right? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was so fed up, you know? Third day in a row, late to the office, to a job that I don't even want to do, you know? And I just stood there, train's late, person under the train. Uh, <laughs> and I just looked, on the opposite side of the platform, there was a, there was a, an ad for a, for a big comedian playing the O2. And I just stood there and I thought, you know what? This is what I want to do. I want to be, the person under the train. <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> but I'll try stand up first, you know. <laughs> and then I did eventually, and I, I eventually quit my day job as well. And it wasn't it wasn't just the comedy that made me quit my day job. Like the the thing that really made me quit my day job was they hired a new guy, <laughs> and he sat next to me every day, and he would show me pictures of his kids. <laughs> every, every day. <laughs> every day. Like, different photos, same kid. I, 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 I didn't, didn't get it, you know? So eventually I just decided that I'm gonna come in with pictures of random kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can fight back. You know, <laughs> he would show me his. I'd be like, "Oh yeah, nice." You know? mm -hmm. I'll check these ones out. Don't you? <laughs> 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 
Oh, I didn't know you had kids. No, I don't. You know, no. <laughs> Just really like these ones. <laughs> So yeah, that's how I quit that job. <laughs> and I think that's about my time. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you very much.